Today in the Tech Corner, we're going to talk about an alloy that is over a hundred years old. But I don't really know much about it, so let's move on to Rodney because you do. So, Rodney, tell me all about alloy K500. Well, I knew it had been around a long time, but whilst prepping for this, Tom, I, I found out that, yeah, it's it's 100 year centenary, effectively. So you've got something that was developed and, and invented a long, long time ago, but it's still being very widely used these days. So K500 is actually used mostly in marine and oil and gas. And what are the reasons for that? So um, it's a combination of nickel and copper. And the beauty of those two different uh, elements, metals, is that they'll alloy together almost perfectly and at some point in time somebody figured out that you put the right combination together and you get a really good mixture of properties. The corrosion resistance is off the hook so it's widely used in the chemical processing industry. Um, it's got great resistance to seawater and not just being put in seawater but fast moving seawater which creates its own challenges and through a bit of uh, metallurgical development, I guess you would call it, uh, you're able to push the strength up uh, dramatically as well, which opens up some other applications in marine. Now, you've already said this material has been around for 100 years, and obviously it must have started 100 years ago for one specific application. Now, there is an application that you would not think this material has been used for, <laughs> but we're going to get onto that later. So, what are the properties like the tensile strength of this material? It's, it's high strength by most uh, comparisons. There are alloys, uh, in Canal 718 for instance, is higher strength still, but this is a very high strength uh, alloy. So you could imagine it being used, for instance, in something like um, a drive shaft or a marine shaft where it's transferring power and you need that very high strength and high toughness as well as all of the corrosion resistance and other properties that it brings. Now, talk me through the heat treatment of this, because obviously if you're talking about a drive shaft, that needs to be hard and quite long wearing, because you don't want a drive shaft going halfway through nope. a journey. So talk us through the heat treatment of this material. So, um, it's the same phenomena that's used for a handful of other grades. So there are uh, a number of high strength uh, nickel based grades. So 718 would be one, uh, 925 would be another more modern grade, but K500 is a, is a good example. So you have the, the base recipe, so it's 95% plus made of either nickel or copper. And that gives you uh, a reasonably strong starting point, but you put some small additions in, you know, uh, it's it's really the, the a couple of percent of this or that, in which case it's aluminium or titanium, but just those couple of percent uh, form a really fine network of, of microscopic precipitates, almost like reinforcing points or bars within the microstructure. But the way of achieving those is you put the addition in and then you expose the alloy to a, a a very long protracted heat treatment process um, where these uh, precipitates appear out of the solution throughout the alloy. So you're talking about heat treating it for 16, 20 hours at a time at, at several hundred degrees centigrade and the strength slowly develops almost as you're curing or aging the metal. Oh, so that's quite a, a fine process. That can't be done at any shop you find. That's got to be done quite specific. Now, obviously we're talking about K500 here, but there is another material of K400, but why would you choose K500 over 400? Well, the, as I was just talking about this sort of precipitation strengthening uh, mechanism, that's the key difference. So 400 and K500 are 95% effectively the same alloys. So they'll have the same physical properties, uh, non-magnetic, good toughness at low temperature, a good corrosion resistance, but the couple of percent difference between the two alloys is that addition of aluminium and titanium and the heat treatment to treble the strength. So K500 will be used where the additional strength is required by your application, for instance, marine dry shafts, uh, where 400 would perhaps be used more where it's the temperature or the corrosion resistance is more fundamental or, or basic. Now you're 
you, we, you keep going over the same thing that it's tougher, it's tougher, it's tougher. But obviously for a drive shaft, that's got to be machined. Yep. We've got to make that drive shaft. So how is this material like for machining? Um, it's going to be pretty tough, to be honest. So uh, you already started from the basis of it's a high strength alloy. So that's going to put its own stresses and strains on both tooling selection and the machine selection in the first place. Um, it will work harden. So uh, your strategy for how much material you're removing in each pass needs to be considered. Uh, remove too much and you've got massive loads, remove too little and it's going to work hard and, and, and become more difficult as you go on. Um, and then the shear act that it's 80% nickel. Nickel means you're going to get a build up of temperature around the tooling and lead potentially to uh, excessive wear. However, you are putting 20% copper in there so that helps with the thermal conductivity. So it's not quite as aggressive or as challenging perhaps as some other nickel based alloys but I don't think anyone would say it's easy or straightforward. Well Rodney we've spoke a lot about our K500 and we said at the start there was something this material is now doing that people wouldn't think of. So what is this material doing now which when they invented it 100 years ago they would have never have thought of? Okay uh, so it is being used at the moment for the construction of rocket motors of all things. So you've got an alloy developed a hundred plus years ago finding its way into uh, the latest generation of rocket motors. See that to me is, that blows my mind because you'd think for something as complex as a rocket motor they would have probably invented a new type of material for that but for material that's been around for over a hundred years to be seen there is just mind-blowing to me. Now Rodney if people at home have watched this and would like to know more information on K500, how can they get in contact with you guys at Langley Alloys? The easiest way is find our website, langleyalloys.com. Uh, we've got sites operating in the UK and the US, so there's always somebody available at the end of the phone or the end of the web chat, 18, 20 hours a day, and uh, we've got plenty more information to share. Well, Ronnie, from all of us here, thank you, and thank you for coming to the TD Tech Corner today. You're welcome. Thank you.